Welcome to Fast Draw 101. I'm Howard Darby, and today we're talking about blanks. Shooters on the line. Shooters set. When most people think of blanks, they think of the type used in Hollywood movies. Now, those are designed to be pretty safe beyond about a couple feet in front of the barrel. But because of fast draw, we're shooting up to 15 feet away, we need to have a very powerful blank to be able to break a balloon at that distance. If you watch this slow motion clip, you'll notice there's a lot of explosive power behind the blanks we use in fast draw. As such, you're going to want to follow all normal firearm safety rules. In addition, you always want to wear earplugs because these blanks are as loud or louder than a regular gun blast. If you haven't already done so, please check out my fast draw safety video for tips on how to stay safe when shooting fast draw. In North America, there are three main fast draw associations, and two of which shoot blanks in competition. The Cowboy Fast Draw Association only shoot wax, but if you're shooting in the World Fast Draw or Ohio Fast Draw Association, you'll see blanks used in competition. Sometimes it'll be a full blank competition, sometimes half blanks and half wax bullets, and sometimes it'll be an all wax competition. The blanks we use in fast draw are a 45 Colt cartridge filled all the way up to the top with very grainy powder. When we fire the shot, half of it burns up, the other half flies out, breaks the balloon in the target, releasing the micro switch. That will stop the clock and give you your time. For more information on how that works, check out my tire target and timer videos. While most fast draw competitors make their own blanks, like I'll show you in a minute, you can go online and order them. If you go to buffaloblanks.com or do a Google search for cowboy mounted shooting blanks, you'll find a number of vendors. They were going for about $40 to $45 a hundred at the time I was making this video. When you make your own blanks, there are five main components you're going to need. You'll need the shells, the primers, powder, wads, and nail polish. The shells we use in fast draw is a 45 shell with an enlarged flash hole. Now the reason for the enlarged flash hole is because without that, with a blank, there's different pressures than there are when there's a bullet on top and the primer will back out and it sometimes will jam up on the, on the frame and stop the cylinder from rotating. So if you drill out the flash hole with a 1 8 inch drill bit, that will give enough pressure differences that will allow the primer to stay in place. You can buy a shell with a large primer pocket by going to Starline Brass and doing a search for their blank 45s. We also use 45s because there's the largest caliber allowed in competition and with the larger caliber you'll have more powder flying down range breaking the balloon so more chance of hitting and getting your time. I know there are a lot of new fast draw shooters who have never had to reload with their own ammunition so I'm going to go step by step through the process of making a blank load. Unless you're using new shells the first thing you're going to need to do is remove the shot primer from the shell. I use a single stage loading press that not only removes the primer but resizes the shell as it goes up into the reloading die. Many people have a multi-stage loading press that every time you pull down the handle it rotates the shell to the next stage. First one depriming and resizing, the second one repriming the shell and then you can have it dump the powder into the shell. Other than using a full loading press, you can use a Harvey D primer that sells for about $50, or you can get a Lee hand press that will not only deprime but will reprime your shell. The second stage is to reprime the shell. Here I'm using a Lee hand primer that sells for about $25 online. The next step is to add powder to your blank. The easiest load is 1F black powder, but if you can't get black powder, you can use bullseye powder in the bottom and then 4831 or any other grainy slow burning powder on the top that will fly out and break the balloon. If using 1F powder simply put all your shells together take the 1F powder and pour it over top of your shells so they fill them up tap it down so that the powder is not higher than the top of the shell To keep the powder in the blank, you're going to need a wad on top no greater than 1 16th of an inch. Some people use thin cardboard. I'm using a half inch stationary sticker that you can buy at most stationary stores. You're going to need some sort of dowel or a smaller shell casing that will fit just inside the 45 shell. You take the wad, place it on top, and use that dowel to press the wad inside so it goes down and holds onto the edge of the shell at the top. Often the wads will stay by themselves, but in human conditions you're going to need something that will stop it from separating from the side of the shell and falling out. 
That way the powder will fall out and you won't have anything going down range when you come to fire your shot. Simply take the nail polish and run it around the edge of this wad where it joins to the side of the shell. That will help seal it in there so it won't fall out and you'll lose your powder. Two final tips when using blanks. Don't buy a 45 Colt case. That's what this one is. It's designed for a shell with a bullet on top. If you buy the 45 ACP case, it's perfect for a 45 Colt that doesn't have the bullet on top. It will be a lot more safe for your shells. They won't be bouncing around. Lastly, although there are a lot of competitions with blanks, most people don't practice with the blanks very much. That's because loading a blank and putting balloons in after every shot is a lot more onerous than shooting wax bullets. So most people practice with wax almost entirely. Maybe just before they go to a contest, they'll try a few blanks just to make sure they're working for them. If you want more details on that, please check out my targets video where I explain that a little better. Well, I hope that gives you more information on shooting blanks in Fast Draw. For more information on Fast Draw, check out my other videos at FastDraw101.com or for more information on the sport of Fast Draw, check out FastDraw.org. Thank you and good shooting.